And what's going on guys, it's Keith again with WCCF Tech TV and today we are in the process of upgrading our workstation slash test bench from a Z87 platform to an X99 and we're going to start off by taking a look at the ASUS X99A2 motherboard. Now this is the second iteration of the X99A, it's been revised for full support for Broadwell E and that's why we went ahead and went for the A2 because we ordered up a 6800K to go in it. All right, so let's take a look around the box, take a look at it, it's fairly simple. And on the back you get the typical marketing with the five-way optimization. It's got the safe slot, we'll take a look at that. It's got their OC socket where they've got the additional pins for overclocking. Um, it's got a dedicated new fan controllers, which is something I'm really excited about. And part of the reason why we went with this board is so that it could have better control over the fans for cooler testing whenever we do that. Now it does have the Aura, the RGB lighting on the motherboard. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but some people like it. And well, it's just part of it now. Uh, it's got the Crystal Sound 3. It doesn't have the Supreme effects like the ROG boards, but the Crystal Sound 3 is great and bear, bearing that I typically use USB sound devices, not too terribly concerned about that. So let's take a look inside the box and we're gonna pull the motherboard out and set it to the side for just a moment as we go through the accessories that come in here. All right, put that to the side. Now we've got the deliciously ugly <laughs> Nvidia SLI bridge, which I really don't like these cables in this color, but it is what it is. Um, you get the rear I.O. which is soft and padded on the back and on this side it's got this nice um, accents that match the design of the motherboard which is kind of nice. Then you've got the um, CPU installation tool for people who are not too comfortable with handling the processor and we'll actually do a separate video on how to use this to install your processor in the motherboard. For those curious it's got the Q connector for the front panel headers. That makes it really easy to connect all of the front panel I.O., uh, the power switch, reset, and all of that. Got the driver's disk in case you need that. Otherwise, download those from the website. It's got this little bitty standoff for the M.2. I kind of like that it's separate but not installed, so you can either have it on or not. I would recommend going ahead and installing this so that you don't ever lose it. And you've got a front panel USB type C connector. And that's kind of nifty because it's starting to become more of a thing on mother on cases. I know cases such as the Cooler Master Master Case uh, Maker Pro has it on the front and you, you need that to connect. Now it does come with four SATA con uh, cables. Now it can support a lot more than this, but it only comes with those. And then a user guide. So. All of the information that you need to use the motherboard is in there. So let's set all this back in there and take a look at the motherboard itself. Now this is the motherboard itself. It comes in this uh, cardboard surrounding and it comes wrapped in anti-static material. So we're going to go ahead and move all this out of the way. This is a wooden surface. It is scratched up, but that's because I set a lot of motherboards and graphics cards on it. Now let's go ahead and Pull this puppy open and get it out of the bag and take a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and take this humongous plastic protector off of there. And there she is. Now let's get in here a little bit closer and go around the motherboard and take a good look at it. Alright, so starting at the top you've got an 8 pin and a 4 pin for the CPU. Now the second 4 pin is optional. You don't have to use it. I'll be using it just because the power supply we're using supports it. Now you do have the nice um, metal heat sink on the VRMs here and you've got a pump header and two fan headers for your processor which are kind of nice. Your memo K buttons over here on this side. You've got the 2011-3 socket there with the quad channel set up for 8 DIMMs on either side of it. I've become quite a fan of these covers over the rear I.O. It's just a personal thing. I really like seeing them on motherboards now. It does have an additional heat sink over here for additional cooling over those components. That's since that's not the VRM, but that is the memory controller or the memory power delivery. So it assists in keeping that cool for whenever you're powering up enough RAM DIMMs. 
Uh, rear I.O. is your standard affair. You got your BIOS reset. You got your BIOS reset. You got a PS2 port, combo port there. That's nice for debugging and overclocking if you're into that kind of thing. We've got uh, the four USB 2.0, and you got the USB 3, USB 3.1, and 3.1 Type C. And then you've got your LAN connector as well as your audio ports here on the back for 7.1 plus uh, optical digital out. And you can see that is down here with the Crystal Sound Audio. Now as far as PCI lanes, you've got a by 16, a by 16, by 8, and by 8. Now it does only support up to three-way SLI or Crossfire, which the CPU we got really only, you don't want to go past two because you only got 28 lanes, which we're only testing single GPU here, so shouldn't be an issue. Now the top one does have the additional support for the PCI bracket to keep it from breaking as easily. That's never really been a problem for me, but I have seen people have it happen to them. Now LEDs, and we talked about the aura with the lighting, is going to be in the tabs here, which is kind of odd, but it does light up around the chipset cooler. Speaking of the chipset cooler, it is down here. That's the X99 chipset. And with the Turbo 5 Power Up chipset down there below it, we'll be utilizing that later to see how well it overclocks on its own. That'll be fun. Now you do have your power and your reset switch as well as your Q code readout down here, which are really important to me, especially when diagnosing problems. And you do have a header for the Aura for RGB control from the motherboard, so light strips that you may have you can control from the motherboard. USB 3.0 header down here along the bottom, and more USB connections, as well as the front header connections down here. You've got an XMP switch, so if you're kind of nervous about going in the BIOS and turning on XMP, you can just hit the switch and enable it or disable XMP profiles. You have your M.2 uh, SATA port down here with the standoff supporting the much longer versions instead of just the shorter ones. And then around here to the side, we'll take a quick look here at the storage connections points that you've got here. You've got all of your SAS, your SATA Express, your U.2. You got plenty of connections down here as well as additional ones up here toward the top as well as more fan headers located along here and a second USB 3 header. So you got two USB 3 headers on there, the 24 pin, and that's really the motherboard I mean, in a nutshell. It's not the most advanced motherboard that you can get for X99. It's kind of what I would consider your middle of the road mid-range board. It's got most of the features you're going to want. Nothing too crazy. Uh, not a lot of difference between this one and the ROG Strix, which is why we went ahead and decided to save a few bucks and go with this model. Now we're going to set this to the side here only because I've had some people curious about the packaging and such for it. So the Broadwell E chipset packaging, so you got the box that the processor comes in. You notice it doesn't come with the heatsink, you get all of your information there, as well as some more stuff from Intel there. And that's really about it, but take a look at the inside, what comes in there. Go ahead and pop this open. Alright, take it, it'll let go. Alright, you've got your case badge and your manual for it, as well as the processor itself, which is in this interesting <laughs> cardboard contraption here. So you get that to the side, and there it is. There is the i7-6800K Broadwell E chip. These things are fairly large. All right, that's been it for this video, and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use this CPU and this motherboard using the chipset installation tool. All right, guys, that's been it for today. Feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you found it interesting or intuitive, and we will catch you in the next one.